Hi, this is Katie again with how to make your own KAT logo. So um, this should be a quick tutorial, but we have some fun stuff in here. Our logo is um, is pretty cool, and you can change it however you need to. We've done some neat things with it. This is for our demo team. This is uh, just the black logo. We turned a, a koi, then a phoenix. We've personalized it for uh, specific people, and they've put their own animal in there. Um, we've done it for tournaments and things like that. So lots of different things that you can do, and uh, we're going to show you how to make your own KAT logo today. So we're going to start, we're going to use a lion um, just to start it out today. But first things first, we are going to go to KAT Drop, or, uh, yeah, KAT Dropbox right here. And we're going to go to KAT, Logos and Merchandise. And then you're going to go over here to KAT Logos. So in here is most of our logos. And we want to start out with just the regular KAT template, which is this one right here with the tiger. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to double click on the PSD file, because that's what's going to give us the most options um, to change it out. So, this is our main KAT logo, uh, also with the words along the edge there. And I'll show you how to curve those words around if you want to change them um, today or anything like that. So, we're going to start out, maybe make our, our own file here. So, we're going to go to File New, and we're going to, we're going to say inches. A good size is 8 by 8 inches. And let's go with 150. It's a pretty decent resolution size. You should be able to uh, to kind of get what you need out of that. It's not a huge file size to start with, so we'll press OK. And now we have our own file. So we're going to start with the KAT logo, and I'm going to drag over the layers that I want. So to start with, we'll actually just take all of the layers. I'm going to put my little move tool here. I'm just going to drag them all up to my untitled one, which we will name. So I'll just center it here. Obviously the resolution is a little bit smaller, that's why it's not meeting the edges here. So this is our KAT logo. I can do Control T, and that's alright because we're not going to use that text layer very much. And I'm going to hold down Shift so that my proportions stay the same. I'm just going to drag it to the edges here so I have a Nice, good size logo. All right, so the nice thing about starting with the PSD file is I also have the Taekwondo in Korean that I can work with as well. And I also have the layer of the tiger that I can take out or in as I please. So because we're going to make our own, we're going to take the tire uh, layer out. And for right now, I'm also going to take the Korean Academy of Taekwondo out. So I'm just going to delete those layers. And I'll delete the tiger layer. So now we have the Taekwondo in Korean, which is right here, Taekwondo. I have a complete image, but I don't really need that one, so we'll delete that. And then I have the Chrome Mountain, which is kind of the backbone to our logo here. So um, basically what you have to do is you have to decide what you want in the center of your logo. A lot of times it's an animal. Right? And I can't stress enough that if you are going to put an image in here, you either have to create it yourself, either drawing it, um, creating it in Photoshop, or you take your own picture. Uh, so that way you don't have licensing issues with someone else's image. Or you can go to the public domain um, and get images that way. So I like this site here. It's called publicdomainpictures.net. And you can find all sorts of pictures in here. Uh, for free, and they're in the public domain, so they're released to the public, um, and they're they're yours to use. So I just looked up lion, and there are all sorts of different pictures up here. These ones you have to pay for, right? But we're going to look in these ones that we don't have to pay for, and I like this one. So I'm going to take a look at it and see if I really like it. There's a nice female lion. Um, I actually have downloaded a lot of Peter's pictures. It says if you like it, you can buy him a cup of coffee. If you like to support him, you can uh, 
pay them a dollar through PayPal or what have you. Um, now you don't want to go to this premium download because that's something again you have to pay for. So what you want to do is go to this little plus sign here and just say look at the photo closer. Make sure it's what you want. So it's going to blow it up nice and big. That's a good enough size for me. So again I don't go to premium download, I just go to download this picture. Click on that. This will pop up and I am just want to say open with Adobe Photoshop. I click OK and it's going to pop up in Photoshop. I've already done that for the sake of this because my computer was slower earlier. So here's that picture. It just pops right up. So I'm going to go Alt and zoom in with my mouse right there. And I have a nice picture of her face. So instead of using the quick selection tool because everything is a very similar tone, I might have a difficult time picking up what I want. It kind of goes all over the place. I'll do it a little bit, but mostly I'm going to grab it with my... Oh, it didn't do too bad. Um, what I really want to do is use my little uh, polygon lasso tool here. Remember, if you can't see it right here, if for some reason it's on lasso tool, just right click, scroll down, polygon lasso tool. Now to add to my selection, I'm going to press hold down shift and I'm going to start my selection. You can let go of shift once you do that. I'm going to scroll in on her ears here. I don't really need the tufts of hair. I'll leave that out. I'll finish that. Press enter. Now to get rid of this little part of the selection, I hold alt and as you see a little minus sign comes up on my polygon tool. And I'm going to get rid of the part that's not her. There we go. This part looks good. I think I'll get rid of this little tuft because I don't really want that in my picture. You can choose to spend as much time or as little time on the selection as you like. Um, if I wanted to, I could go in and select every one of these whiskers, but that would take too long for the sake of this tutorial, so I'm not going to. Um, I'll just take out some of these little furs and I'll make her chin nice and round. Remember, you have to close up. Um, whatever selection you do with the polygon lasso. So if you're subtracting, you want to go to the outside. If you're adding, you can then close it up towards the inside. So I'm just going to get her right here so we just have her head selected. All right. Now to see how this looks and to refine it a little bit, I'm going to go up here and do Refine Edge. And as you can see, she's kind of fuzzy on the outside, and that's because I have it feathered a lot. So I'm going to... I have it feathered and smooth. So I can see it's a pretty good selection of her. And I can always take this part out too, this little part of her back, which I think I'm going to do. So I have my lasso tool, and I'm just going to go around her face here. So we just have a nice lion face. All right. There we go. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Nice lion face. I'll add this little part of her cheek here because it looks kind of funny without it. So refine edge, push OK, and now this is selected right now. So I'm going to do Control C for copy, and then I'm going to go to my document and then do Control V, which is paste. Now once you get to this point and you've used your time selecting, don't forget to save. So the first time you save, go to File, Save As, and you can save it however you want. Um, Instead of going in flyers and handouts, go to logos and merchandise, KAT logos, and you can do lion logo. All right, right there. Just click OK for that. So now my lion head is smaller than the others just due to the quality of the photo. So I'm going to do Control T. I'm going to hold down Shift to keep the proportions. And I'm going to get her nice and big. Right there. I'm going to put her right up about there. That seems pretty good. I'm going to press enter. Now I have my nice lion head. Um, now as you can see right now the taekwondo are all in front of her face. And that's where, the, where they are in this uh, layers category right here. If I put her above them then obviously it would block those ones out. But I kind of like them being in front of her so I'm going to scroll her down again. So here's our tiger's face and we have the taekwondo. Now the cool thing is we can change the Chrome Mountain very easily. So I'm going to make it so we don't see those. They're still in our Photoshop document, but they're just not seen right now. I'm going to go to my Chrome Mountain. And I'm going to do something called Control, uh, Control U is the shortcut to the hue and saturation. 
And this is going to change the color and the saturation of my mountain. So that's how we change the color there. So I'm going to change it this way. With our line, it might be cool to have these nice yellow tones. I'll put her in there and see how they are. So we'll have a nice orange one. To saturate, you can change it here if you like it a little bit lighter. This will uh, affect the lightness and darkness of the chrome mountain part as well. So I kind of like it there. If I press OK, it automatically changes my chrome mountains here. If I don't want to permanently change it, I'll trash that from my history. And I have my adjustments layer right here that will not permanently change any of the layers unless I merge them. So this hue and saturation layer is right here. It brings up an extra layer, but it does the same thing that I just did right here, but it makes it much easier to change later on. So let's see. I like it right about there. And I'll saturate it a little more. And I can always toggle this on and off, and it will only affect the layers directly below it. So I want to put that right above my Chrome Mountains there. Now I'm going to put my Lion back on and see if it's the right, uh, the right tone. So it looks pretty cool with her. I can see if it looks better if I have it green or purple or dark blue or anything like that if I wanted a yellow lion head or a yellow tone to my logo. But I kind of like it. I kind of like it right where we had it. So I'll leave it there. Um, and now I'm going to add the Taekwondo part. So with this lion head too, you have the option to fade it or blend it. So to fade the lion head, uh, first of all, if you want to name it, you double click on the letters here, name it lion, press enter. If you want to blend it, go over to this blue part here, not on the letters, and you have your little blending options. Now, if you just want to fade it back a little bit, you can just fade it into the logo. So we'll fade and you can see um, the layer directly behind it. Uh, if you don't want to fade it, you have different options like beveling it so it looks, you know, like kind of made it that way. You can um, overlay a color and only have the actual um, silhouette of her. Um, you could put an outline around her, which is stroke. You touch the stroke and you can make it bigger like Mickey Mouse or smaller as you choose. And you can also change the color right here. Uh, I don't really want to do any of those. So I'm going to not do any of those, so I'll push cancel right now. The other option we have is this little scroll down button right here. And these are your blending options. Right now it's, it always starts on normal, but you can do something like color burn. Um, and you just play around with these. These are really cool. On the current KAT logo, the tiger, I believe, is on color burn. We have linear burn. You can do all sorts of... Uh, cool things with the blending options. Um, I kind of liked it on color burn. It's kind of neat. So we have her on color burn. We can do that right now. Uh, and then I have the Taekwondo. You can change these as well. If you do the control U, if you want them, say, all black, you just pull over there. And that's our dough turning all black. So I kind of like that. Do the same here. You can do this several different ways. If you like it like that, you can turn it that way. If you don't want to permanently change it, you double click here and you do color overlay. And we'll turn it to black. And then we have it that way. And then we can easily um, bevel and emboss it if we'd like. You can change whether you wanted a hard bevel soft bezel, um, how deep it looks, things like that. So if you like it like that, you can do that. You can copy layer style and you can paste it to each of these so you don't have to keep doing it. And it'll automatically change them. There we go. All right. Now to add your own custom text, we have our text tool here. And let's start it off in black. So we start with it black, and let's just say, I want it to say, oh, 
it's too big, which is right here. Um, let's do 36. There we go. Let's do um, Katie's KAT. All right. So I can make that a little bit bigger now that I see it. So we have Katie's KAT. And to move it, I'm just going to move it right here. Oh, and I put two apostrophes in there. So you can just click back on your text tool, click on it, and delete. There we go. So obviously it's not fitting to my circle right now. So you have the cool option. You have to be on the text box and you have this little warp text icon right here. So you press that and then you choose what type of warp you want. And these do all sorts of different things. You can arc it up and when you do that, you can just distort it however you'd like. I like it down a little bit. Um, that looks pretty good. I'll do it there. Now if you do the warp this way, it's harder to control it because you have to go back and forth. Um, you can do the control T button here and you do the warp button here and then you can just uh, grab it and warp it however you want and that's a little bit easier. So I like it like that and I can move it up a little bit in this warp tool. So I'm going to say there we go. Nice Katie's KAT. Move it up a little bit. Nice. All right. Now from there, I have uh, the option of going and doing my blending options. I can bevel it. I can uh, I can do a pattern overlay on it, and you can choose your patterns from here. You can upload different patterns uh, from different Adobe Photoshop sites. I can put a little stroke around it. And that's how you make your own KAT logo. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Good luck, and uh, I will see you next time.